Hello, my HD friends. I need you to wait one moment while I go live on uh, the live broadcast. So I need you to give me one minute. Thank you for joining. My HD people, how do you like the new camera? I think it's awesome. Let me know what you think on the comment line. Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to the correct views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks. I know the cameras are a little in different areas. There's two different cameras for this. And I'm not really going to make any jokes about it today. Uh, HD people, I'm pointing at, at you now. Low def people, I'm pointing at you now. If you don't like your camera quality, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and they will give you better camera quality as soon as the high def loads. I deliberately have the low def on for people that don't have high bandwidth. It's not that hard to understand, people. And I'm really not in the mood to joke today because today marks the three-year anniversary of the worst disaster, according to Chris Busby, and I agree, I, I agree, the worst disaster in all of human history. Today is, in fact, the three-year anniversary. It's 3-11-2014, a.m. of the Fukushima disaster. Friends, I knew, I've started the show with Joker hats. I've started the show with all kinds of things. On air, today is not the day to joke. Unfortunately, someone that you love is probably going to die early because of what happened three years ago today. And I am definitely speaking of the Fukushima disaster. I'm not going to do an entire show today on Fukushima because I just did my massive Fukushima update. I'll look it up on my site. It's on there five days ago. What we're going to do today, uh, might be six days depending on what time zone you're in. What we're going to do is uh, start the show off today with a little bit of Fukushima. How's that? This is from RT. Thousands hit Tokyo streets in anti-nuke protest, uh, March 10th, 2014, and I'm very happy to hear this. As the third anniversary of the Fukushima disaster nears, tens of thousands rallied in the country's capital Sunday to protest against the nuclear industry and speak out against the government's plans to resume nuke energy production to power the economy. I felt that it's important that we continue to raise our voice whenever possible. Yusaro Kawai, a 66-year-old businessman who is very wise, uh, said from Chiba Prefecture, east of Tokyo, he said it to the AFP. Today, there is no electricity in Japan that is made at nuclear plants. If we continue this zero energy status, and if we make efforts to promote renewable energy and invest in energy-saving technology, I think that it's possible to live without nuclear. Kawai, K-A-W-A-I, A-I, added. And I'm going to pause there for a second, friends. I'm going to tell you why. Maybe Japan is paying, maybe the average citizen is paying an extra 50 or 60 bucks a year to not have nuclear because they have to import so much. Does anyone really have a problem with that in Japan, no matter how poor you are? And trust me, I have been as poor as just about anyone, unless they're in a third world country. I used to drive cab for Yellow Cab in Canton, Ohio. How poor can you get? Let's get real. Um, I would have even then paid an extra $60 to not have the Perry nuclear plant in Canton, Ohio, which it unfortunately very much is. Um, it's important to move away from nuclear, and I'm going to give you two reasons for it. First of all, man-made global warming is a lie. Uh, 
Somebody put a house beat behind that for me. Man, man, global warming is a lie. Man, you get the point. Um, the other one is, even if man-made global warming was real, the amount of damage that nuclear brings to the environment just through routine releases. And if you don't believe me, look up nuclear plant routine release, you will be horrified. Um, they do more damage to the planet than what the global warming nutcases claim we do to the planet. Nuclear is far worse than anything we've ever seen, and Fukushima has proved this. And if you want to question me, then look up the work of Helen Caldicott, Chris Busby, Lauren Murray, uh, Kevin Blanche, Arnie Gunderson. Look, I don't even really like Arnie Gunderson. I'm going to be real. It's the three-year anniversary. Arnie Gunderson is a crabby, bitchy, too-good-to-talk-to-you person when you call his site. You know what? Arnie Gunderson's science is correct. He treated me like a, like a jerk when I called him. One of the most disrespectful, arrogant, nasty people. He didn't swear at me, so maybe not nasty. But one of the most unpleasant messages I ever got in my life was from Arnie Gunderson. Um, I, and you guys know that listen to this show. I've talked to politicians. I've talked to musicians. I've talked to everybody in between. Arnie Gunderson is a prick. And yes, I said it. But you want to know what? It doesn't matter if I like Arnie Gunderson. And I don't! Arnie Gunderson speaks the truth. And when Arnie Gunderson, who's a jerk, releases a new video, I watch it and I quote it. Because while I happen to know that he is a jerk, he's correct. And it doesn't really matter what I think of him, what you think of him, or what you think of me. The point is, Arnie Gunderson is one of the best in his field, be he a jerk or not. And I have a lot of respect for the man's mind. And, I mean, you can look up, the reason I say this is there's tons of resources out there, people. It's not just me. It's not even people that agree with me, clearly. Uh, this, is, this isn't about me, it's not about Arnie. This is about the fact that Arnie and I are correct. Protesters gathered, as I am proud to say, in the Hibaya Park located close to government buildings and marched around the National Parliament. Musicians performed using electricity generated by polar panels, right, by polar, polar bears, they can't swim, by solar panels to help the demonstrators' message be heard. Composer Raichi Sakamoto, who played music that he wrote in 2011, to mourn the victims, said a Fukushima incident continues today. Over 1,600 residents of the stricken area died due to complications related to stress and other disaster-related illnesses, AFP reported. Well, let's just say that half of the people that died there died due to issues that weren't stress-related. When I went to school, that was 800 people. Easy math. 800 people have died due to complications of the disaster that were not related to stress. Even if you think half of them didn't. Maybe half of those didn't. Fine. Out of 1,600 people, could you believe that Fukushima poisoned 400 people? Okay. Is there anybody listening to this that would say that 400 people dying isn't a problem? If you believe that, the next time an airline dies or crashes into the ocean, then to you it doesn't matter. It don't matter. It's under 400, right? If 400 seems high to you, then it matters. 
The tsunami, and this is a lie. This pisses me off beyond all words. The tsunami also triggered the failure of Fukushima nuclear plant's cooling systems, which in turn led to meltdowns and leaks of radioactive material in the region. Engineers say it will take about 40 years to decontaminate the reactors. That's just wonderful. They're going to dismantle them and cripple them, they claim. Fukushima's cleanup has been going through hard times throughout the past three years. In the latest incident, just over a week ago, it says the cleanup of Fukushima's alarm went off to alert one of the cleaning pumps and stopped working. That's a huge problem. Friends, Fukushima is an unprecedented disaster. And we are running plants that work exactly like it in this country. The tsunami is not what triggered the meltdowns, more than one meltdowns, plural. What caused that was in fact the earthquake. We are running plants in the United States that if an earthquake of that magnitude were to hit, we would face the same thing. Now, you're saying, well, a nine, a nine is awful rare, Sam. If Japan got a nine, then there's a very low likelihood that a nine is going to hit the U.S. in our lifetime, or even our children's lifetime, and you are in fact correct. The trouble is, it doesn't take a nine to knock out a certain number of dams in the United States of America. And if that were to happen, there is a 100% guarantee, look up 100% meltdown U.S. Uh, dam flood, it'll come up. It's a lot of words, but that's what you're going to need to get it to come up. And what you will find is that the water from the dams would create the exact same disaster that the ocean created for Fukushima. The, the size of the ocean needed a nine to trigger a meltdown to cause Fukushima. However, it is not a nine earthquake that is needed to trigger the same Fukushima event here because we are not dealing with an ocean, we are dealing with the dams. And the dams do not take a nine to let loose, which would poison the entire southern half of the country, depending on how many uh, were to go red. Possibly it could threaten the habitation of the entire country. Uh, nobody's going to want to buy any crops from the U.S., with the, which is the leader, leading producer of food in the world. That'll change if there were to be a meltdown here. So, friends, let's honor the one-year anniversary of Fukushima with a little bit of common sense. I just gave you a lot of facts. Don't matter if you like me or not. I don't like Arne Gunderson. He's right. You might think I'm a long-haired freak with tattoos. You know what? I'm a long-haired freak with tattoos. But I have the facts. Arne Gunderson has the facts. So look them up. Friends, we are going to go on uh, today... Elizabeth Rentor, PrisonPlanet.com, report most common coloring in food slash drinks could cause cancer. It's the most widely used color for food in the world, though few know enough about caramel color to know that it should be avoided. Aside from being brown, which is in Coca-Cola and Pepsi, it bears no similarities to the sweet candy flavor that it's named after. In other words, there is no caramel, caramel, it's caramel, in it. As a matter of fact, not appetizing at all, caramel color contains a potentially cancer-causing ingredient. A recent Consumer Reports study found that you may be receiving more of it than what's generally assumed to be safe. Friends, I've had a lot of people ask me uh, why I rally against this so much. Well, one of the reasons is because I like rallies. I like Coca-Cola. I love to have a rum and Coke. I love it. Bacardi and Coke is like the bomb. I love it. I love fast food. I don't like it. I love it. 
The fact that they don't have to put these kinds of poison into it, but yet they do, is the exact reason I'm furious about it. I also work a day job. That is, well, not really day. I get off at 3 a.m. Um, it involves in late hours, and there's very few things open. So you end up at a lot of fast food restaurants if you live as I do. And the fact that they're putting in this, in this food infuriates people like me more than most. Because it affects us more than most. According to Consumer Reports, Formal, which is uh, M-E-T-H-Y-L-I-M-I-D-A-Z-O-L-E, -E, has been shown to cause cancer in mice. The International Agency for Research on Cancer found it to be similar, quote, possibly carcinogenic to humans, uh, that is us, for you Lady Gaga fans, in 2011. Though there is no federal limit for caramel, a color, and its dangerous ingredient, formal, in foods and beverages, there is a limit in California. It says Proposition 65 became effective Jan 27, 2012, requires food and beverage makers to label the products, which could expose consumers to more than 25 grams per day. And then it warns of potentially cancer-causing effects of the chemical. Caramel color. Million dollar color. Everybody loves caramel. Might as well call it million dollar color. Everybody loves million dollars, do they not? Never mind the fact that there's more cancer-causing agents in it than there is caramel. Let's give it a pretty name. For their study, Consumer Reports tested beverages from both California and New York State and found several went over 20 milligrams limit. There are two rounds of testing, the first in April and the second in September of 2013. Some of the beverages which tested above the 29 microgram limit in the first round were far lower in the second time. Pepsi at 174 in April and 32 in September. So let's cut to the chase, which we like to do on the correct views. If it has caramel color in, try not to drink very much. Try not to drink any. And if you pick up the bottle and it's in it, don't buy it. That's how you rebel. That's how we win. MyFoxDC.com has our next story. U.S. teens are more stressed than adults. Back before I knew how to write lyrics that were better than Usher, who's terrible, I remember writing as a teenager, the stupidest lyric ever, working hard just like a ranger, a day in the life of a teenager. You could not survive it, a day in the life of a teenager. Looking back, the only thing that I regret writing, and thankfully I never sang it anywhere, was a day in the life of a ranger. I can write a lot, I can rhyme a lot better things now than ranger, so I'm ashamed of that. But I am not ashamed of the intelligence that I was putting into it. I was 16 or 17 when I wrote that. And I could see then the teenagers had it worse in many instances than adults do. And that is something that I have stood by even though I'm now 41. I still stand by it. Well, it has now been proven in 2014. It's nice to know that there's a reason that I called the show The Correct Views. U.S. teens are more stressed than adults. I don't doubt this at all. It says teenagers in the U.S. are experiencing higher levels of stress than many adults. The USA Today said, I believe it. And it's not nearly as bad here as it is in Japan. As a part of the American Psychological Association Stress in America survey, more than 1,000 teenagers and 2,000 adults answered questions about their overall stress levels and coping habits. Though the APA has conducted similar surveys in the past, this was the first to focus specifically on stress among teenagers. I would probably be a much better adult if I wasn't raised in the environment that I was in as a teenager. 
The trouble is there is the exception that now that everything has fallen to hell during uh, Generation Y, that somehow Generation X had it better? No. The only people that had anything in Generation X were the people that were one, born with enough money to be able to invest in it when they turned 18 or 19 into the internet stock, and two, the number of Gen Xers that were smart enough to get out of it before it crashed. The rest of us, we never had a chance more than any other Generation Y uh, youth. So I, I get it. it. It sucked to be Generation Y and it sucked to be Generation X. That's why I'm out here doing this show. Overall, unsurprisingly, the survey revealed that 27% of teenagers reported feeling, quote, extreme stress during the school year compared to 20% of adults. While levels of extreme stress among teens fell to 13% over the summer months, 34% of teens surveyed said they expected their stress levels to increase over the next year due to stressors including schoolwork, family, and friends. Adults have everything but school, so it stands to reason we need to be a little bit easier on our non-thug and our non-idiot teenagers, but those among us who really study, we need to support them a lot more than we do. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Do me a favor, if you're in Canton, Ohio, check out the wonderfulness that is the Arcadia Grill. Yes, I said wonderfulness, it's probably not a word. Unfortunately, it's the only word I can think of to describe how wonderful and blissfully delicious their food really is. Um, I had the ravioli as recently as last Friday and savored every bite. A delicious drink served up there. Go to the uh, Arcadia Grill on Court Avenue. Tell them Sam sent you from the correct views. Look up the work of Mike McLaughlin while you're there. Uh, Mike, M-I-K-E-M-A-C, laugh, L-A-G-A-C-L-I-N, Mike McLaughlin. He is a horror story vampire short story writer that you will love. And while you're at it, why not look up the happy puppy? Why? How many times do you put carcinogens into your dog's metabolism and not even know it? GMOs in the food that we eat? There's probably GMOs in the food that they eat. Well, happy puppy makes all natural dog treats. Look up the happy puppy on Facebook. Friends, theguardian.com Meteorite smashes into moon in the largest lunar impact ever recorded. That's huge. And this is my shout out to my uh, new show, Kyle Phillips on the Media Speaks, wanted all of us to come up with something new for our Saturday edition. He even wrote me a theme song based on She Blinded Me With Science uh, from uh, Thomas Dolby. And every Saturday, I now have the uh, news from the science front. And uh, I'm going to be doing less and less science on this show because it doesn't really fit in. And I'm going to be doing more and more, obviously, on news from the science front. Every Saturday at 2 p.m., I am going to get to a little bit of it here because I've ended up with more stories about science interests than I have in a while. So, I can't get to it all there. So, the only time you're going to hear science on the correct views is when there's too much for me to get to on the media speak. So, here we go. Astronomers have captured the moment a lump of rock slammed into the moon. There's a quote there on TheGuardian.com with so much force that the bright flash could be seen from Earth with the naked eye. The 400 kilogram meteorite traveling at 61,000 kilometers, that is 4,000 miles per hour, which is the way that it should be written, punched a fresh crater on the moon's surface some 40 meters wide in what is thought to be one of the largest lunar impacts ever recorded. The rock, which was about a meter in diameter, plowed into an ancient lava-filled basin called the Mar Nubium, produced a flash almost as intense as the pole star that took more than eight seconds to fade. The impact energy was equivalent to 15 tons of TNT, at least three times as great as the previous record lunar impact 
observed by NASA of March of last year. Why does this matter, you might be asking. It matters because while the moon has no atmosphere and therefore doesn't block anything hitting it, the Earth has an atmosphere, but many things still manage to get through. If a big enough uh, item of significance were to hit the planet, we could be looking at devastation that hasn't been recorded since the dinosaurs. The event was recorded by Spanish telescopes that monitor the moon under a project called MIDAS, which is Moon Impacts Detection and Analysis System. The flash was picked up at 807 GMT by two telescopes in Seville, South Spain. So friends, look it up. It matters for reasons that I just laid out. Join me at 2 p.m. Mediaspeaks.com. News from the science front. I do this kind of stuff in more depth. In more... How do you say that? More in-depth <laughs> on Saturdays, 2 p.m. Infowars.com, linking to the London Independent Michael Snyder. St 10 stories from the cold, hard streets of America that will break your heart. For those of you that think everything is going to be fine in America, I'm going to randomly pick four of these to read, starting with number one. A 34-year-old man named Rocco, he says, while my wife goes to work, I've been staying at home to converse, conserve fuel. I've been losing weight and eating less, so my family has more on their plates. It feels like the government and big business expect more and more while trying to give back as little as possible. Soon my internet connection will be shut off and he can't listen to the correct views. And since most companies don't offer paper applications, how will I find work then? And that is a huge problem. We need more paper applications. Walking around for miles a day, asking for an application that may or not be available, he asks. Uh, number four, the following is an except from the comment line. It was recently left by one of his readers, writes on Mike Snyder, quote, I live around Ground Zero, Southwest Virginia, and let me tell you, things are bad and getting worse by the day. We don't do drugs, but have family members hooked on meth or pills or both. Many of these pills are prescribed by local doctors, either Suboxone to get you off of the opiates, a total joke, by the way, and tons of Xanax. Why would anyone need 120 milligrams of Xanax a month? Just goes for the snap cards. These pills are traded for sex items. We have family members going to jail. Why is this happening? Because we have no jobs in our country. That's why. Let's pick number eight. In response to my recent article about Appalachia, a reader named Rob shared the following, which happened because we need to quit sending our jobs overseas. We need to stop outsourcing. I am from rural South Central Kentucky, Broadhead, Ross Castle County, and I can tell you that most of the things described above are exactly how it is here. There are so many people on drugs that it's crazy. At first it was meth, which was more of a problem back in 02 and 07, and then the pain pills, which started becoming a huge problem. Oxycontin and Perks 30s are obtained from Florida and Georgia doctors. The pills are something that you can't just walk away from after doing them for a while. They cause people to steal from their family, sell everything they own, and prostitute themselves or their kids to avoid opiate withdrawal. Why do people do these sorts of things? Sometimes because they're human scum and sometimes because they've had no opportunity. Why did I used to have to sell drugs out of my taxi? because I had no other opportunity to feed my wife. 10. An excerpt from the heartbreaking letter that an employed woman named Paula Bray sent to Barack Obama. Dear President, I write to you today because I have nowhere else to turn. I have lost my full-time job in September due to the outsourcing that you and Bush and Cheney and uh, Clinton liked oh. in 2012. She didn't add anything from September to 20. 
I have only been able to find part-time employment 16 hours each week at $12 per hour, but I don't work every week. For the month of December, my net pay was $365. My, can you imagine living a month on $365? I have. I used to work for Fred Nero. He's part of the reason that Canton is as scummy as it is. My husband and I now live in an RV at a campground because of my job loss. Our monthly rent is $4.55, and that doesn't include utilities. We were given a 27-foot RV, or we wouldn't have any place to live. It was from 1983. This is the country that we live in. It goes on to say that, that uh, sometimes her blanket freezes to the wall of the RV. They were living off of microwaved food, but now can bake a little because somebody gave them a stove oven. A block of ice costs $189, and if they don't have it, then there's absolutely no way that they can store any freezable food. Welcome to the America that our wonderful presidents, more than one, have brought us to. Friends, the last story that I'm going to get to, uh, the dunce of the day, uh, the dumdy of the day. For those of you who don't know, no, I give out the dunce cap of the month, once a month, every month. And uh, some people don't make that show, but they're still dumb enough to make the dumdy of the day. Foxnews.com EPA moves against major Alaskan gold mine, could sideline project over salmon. Two things. 